Hi, this is Claudia Lopez with GNO. We're here at The Diplomat in Hollywood, Florida. And I'm Raquel Moss. You're watching the 30th anniversary of the Fort Lauderdale International Film Festival. We're going to be interviewing producers, directors, and celebrities, including Ed Harris. Make sure you stay tuned to watch your favorite producer, director, and actor. I have met an amazing woman with an amazing story to tell, Judy Hatfield. She actually created a foundation, the Hatfield and McCoys. Can you please share with us a little bit of the story you were, we were talking about earlier? Certainly. I saw a need in the Appalachian area of West Virginia and Kentucky to create jobs and improve and, and enhance the tourism industry of that region. Uh, the Appalachian area has lost many jobs recently, so we have found that the youth have no real outlet. So, as a result, we're going to enhance the story of the Hatfields and McCoys, Kevin Costner, brought it back to fame about three years ago with the History Channel. He won the uh, award for a miniseries and as we thank him a great deal for that and as a result now we'll be having a first fundraiser in Fort Lauderdale February 26 and 27 at the Cinema Paradiso in downtown Fort Lauderdale. Now Kevin Costner played the role of your great great grandfather. That's How did that make you feel? Oh I was very proud and truthfully I had heard many of these stories handed down through the generations and each generation has many of the same characteristics. His mannerism, his his demeanor, um, just everything about him was very, very kindred to my spirit. So I was very proud of that role that he played. Actually, uh, this took place during the Civil War. Uh, they were two young men who went off to respectively re support the North and or the South. And as a result, they left their farms, their homesteads, their families, uh, and their careers to uh, help this war situation during you know the time of Civil War. When they returned home, they had to return to their lifestyle and pick up where they left off, so to speak, which in the case of my great-great-grandfather was um, the timbering of the southwestern portion of the state of Virginia. So from there on, he did employ many, many people, and then the rest of the story got interesting. On an election eve, there was a certain melee between males that uh, resulted in an unfortunate death and then the vengeance took place and one thing led to another and the rest is history. <laughs> well it was a pleasure Thank you, darling. speaking with you. You're a very amazing person and I look forward to, to talking to you again. Likewise. Thank you Claudia. Thank you. And what inspired you to write uh, the movie A Flash of Green? Well you know it's based on a novel by John D. MacDonald who was and I think still is a very popular Florida writer and um, it's just a great Florida story. And did you have a favorite part in the movie? Well, you know, it was a great experience. I mean, it was 32 years ago, you know, but it still remains very clear in my mind. I loved working with Victor. Um, yeah, a number of scenes that, a number of things that I remember clearly that were all pretty, a lot of special moments. My dad was in the movie, which was kind of neat because he passed away a couple years ago. So anyway, it's, it's really nice to be here. I'm glad Gregory uh, asked me to come down and honor my friend. So great to be here. I have the creators, producers, actors, the everything of Third Street Blackout. It's a very dark comedy. Um, how are you today, Nagi? <laughs> I'm good. I'm excited to be at the Fort Lauderdale International Film Festival. Absolutely. Hi, Jeremy. Congratulations on the film. Thanks so much. We're super stoked to be here. So let's share with the public what is this film about. So it's um, basically Third Street Blackout is a romantic comedy set in the blackout after Hurricane Sandy in New York. Um, there's a couple, they're super tech savvy, but then the blackout hits and then they just relationships and shenanigans ensue um, and a bunch of hilarity because I can't use their phones and everybody's lost and confused and what is love. Uh, so that's basically the movie and it's fun. And you know comedy because you were named one of the 50th funniest women by the Huffington Post. Congratulations. Oh, thank you for mentioning that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so growing up is overrated, right? <laughs> I was actually the 51st uh, funniest woman, but they didn't publish that in the article. Shame, but I will make sure that they do it next Thank time. <laughs> so um, uh, tell me a little bit of how does it, are you are you 
talent as well? Do you play a character in the movie? Yes, yeah, so we both co-star and we are the couple that it has relationship shenanigans. So we, we wore a bunch of hats, but we have some great comedians in the film. Janine Garofalo, John Hodgman from The Daily Show, Ed Weeks from The Mindy Project, Sashir Samata from SNL. The list goes on and on. Literally, that was not a complete list. Oh, that is awesome. Um, how did you feel about playing a couple? Uh, was there well, camera chemistry? Time for, Nagin, will you marry him? <laughs> His girlfriend was an extra and my boyfriend was a character because my boy boyfriend's an actor. So we were like, you know, performing, acting like a couple in front of our actual significant others. So, uh, no, it was fun. We had a great time. I mean, it, I think anytime you put a bunch of comedians on a set, you're going to have a good time. <laughs> well, it was great having you guys. Congratulations and best of luck. Thank you so Thanks. much. Thank you. Hi, I'm here with Christopher Lovick and Christian Ducale, and they have a movie called A Tree Without Roots, and Christopher here had starred in it and also directed it, and Christian here directed it as well. And gentlemen, can you tell me a little bit about the movie and your role in it? Well, it is about a young man, his journey through India in search of his dying father. He's living in Vietnam and he's just kind of uh, partying and enjoying the nightlife and trying to write a book and living sort of a hedonistic lifestyle. And he gets a message from a friend of his father's which is saying that his father is, is dying in India. And if he wants to meet him for the first time, to hop on a plane. So the main character wrestles with the idea and decides, you know what, I, I should do this, hops on a plane, but when he gets to India, his father has left the hospital because he didn't want to die there. He wanted to see the country one last time. So this sets off like a cat and mouse search between father and son and uh, culminates in a bittersweet ending at the Ganges River. Interesting. And you also star in the movie, right? That's right. Yeah, it was... Uh, a two-man band here, you know, we uh, directed and wrote it and produced it together and edited it and uh, it's kind of an example of just, if you want to make a movie, set out and make a movie.